Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh by Shanel Shai, by Shem Rakar Kadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors to the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth among the heathen nations that look like the heathen nation, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Aquaf that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth and in defense of the gospel. Been having a, a back and forth with uh, at Bishop Melchizedek, who's yet to answer my questions, um, but yet he's pushing the, the slanderous uh, uh, accusation of a rape doctrine. And um, anyone who's saying that about the men of Great Millstone are uh they're 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 bearing false witness no one has ever taught that all right they're taking a um they're not taking it into context of the time and the meaning of words that the word rape and the word rape today and the word rape back then um had had different things it also had to do with age the age of consent and because the age of the age of marriage in the ancient world, among the Hebrews, among most nations, even all the way up into the earlier part of the 19th century. All right. Even, even up until the earlier part of the 19th century was 13, 14 years old. All right. Many of you have grandmothers and great grandmothers that were married at 13 and 14. All right. My grandmother was married at 14, had 12 children. Uh, two of them died. So she ended up with 10, having five males and five females. She started having babies at 15. She was married at 14. All right. Um, my grandfather lived to be 99 years old. All right. My Reubenite grandfather. All right. Who was married to a Gadite woman. And um, yeah, and they had 12 children all together, starting in her in, uh, at 14. And he was, what, four years older than her. So uh, four or five years. But. Um, I want to get into the. Uh, And to a couple scriptures. The first one is going to be uh, Romans. Uh, book of Romans. Because I'm hoping that the brother wasn't trying to be malicious. Because uh, he didn't really seem like that type. But you know, I don't know. But this is Romans uh, 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope also to get understanding. All right. As a matter of fact, let me grab one more. Let me grab Isaiah 8 and 20. Because there are hard and dark sayings in the Bible. And this whole this whole misunderstanding about rape is is one of those things. All right. And um, this is uh, Isaiah 8 and 20. And it reads to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word. Is because there is no light in them, no understanding, all right? And no one in GMS is teaching that you can just go out and snatch women. That That is a complete and total fabrication and a lie, slander. The law is very clear. If you were to touch a woman sexually, all right, and, and go on into a woman and she uh, was against it, she cried out, that man gets put to death. That's what we teach. That's what the Bible says. Now, if the woman was was didn't cry out, and um, and she was she was a wife of another man. Then they both were put to death. If she didn't cry out, all right, then that man would have to pay a dowry to that father. And there are scriptures to substantiate all the statements that I just said. All right, so let's go to uh to and then there's a whole law on how to uh, on taking captive women. Whether it be our people or heathen. All right. Because the only group of heathens we were told not to go into were the ones ever was the ones in uh, uh, in the land of Canaan in Deuteronomy, the 21st chapter. All right. But let's go to. Uh, matter of fact, we'll start there. Let's go to Deuteronomy 21. And there was a uh, I heard that someone said, oh, well, that was talking about. Of our own people. No, man, you just can't snatch up our, our people when they're, we only went to war. You, man, anyway, this is uh, 
Deuteronomy 21. And, and, and matter of fact, it's in uh, Deuteronomy 20 of chapter Salakia, the 17th verse, uh, the nations that we could not touch. When, and, and it said, uh, and that was, it said, but thou, Deuteronomy 20 and 17, but thou shalt utterly destroy the name, namely the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jeb Jebusites, as Jehovah thy power have commanded thee. Those were the only ones we were supposed to uh, uh, not to take. All right, because there were instances when we could have the women for spoil. That was the spoils of war. That's where the word booty comes from. You get the booty. Booty is part of the spoil. Uh, because when you go to verse, verse 14, it says, But the women and the little ones and, and the cattle and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shall thou take unto thyself. All right? So, it says, but the women and the little ones and the cattle, all that in the city, even all the spoil, therefore thou shalt take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the eat the spoil of thy of thy enemies, which Yahweh have given thee. But then there's times when you were not to go into those women. All right. But uh jumping up to the next chapter, chapter 21, verses 1 through through 14, gives a whole breakdown on how to treat a captive wife what you supposed to do but i'm gonna jump for time's sake i'm gonna jump to verse 10 all right and it reads when thou goest forth to war against thy enemy and yahweh thy power have delivered them into thy hands and thou hast taken them captives and seest among the captives beautiful women and has desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to thy wife meaning a concubine because he's not an israelite all right you go and look the word up all right it says then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails, and she shall put on put off put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and remain in thine house, and bewail her father and her mother a full month, and after that thou shalt go un into her, because that's how you get married, you know, point blank period. And she shall be thy wife, and it shall and that's it. Let me in fact I got something written here. Let me go check that. I just call on it. Why did I write that? Oh yeah, talking about Samson. Okay, that's why I wrote that. All right, because he Samson. It didn't say Samson was uh, going off or anything. All right. As a matter of fact, Samson had his mother and father bargain uh, uh for the woman that the dowry may be paid even though the lord was using this woman uh just to pick a fight with the with the uh with the heathens with the philistines but uh he, at judges 16 and 1 then went samson to to gaza and saw there in harlot and went on into her did it say samson went off was he wicked no not at all <laughs> um now let's go to to uh verse I mean chapter 14. If you go to uh Judges chapter 14, uh verses one through three, it says that Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman of Timnath and the daughters of the Philistines, and he came up and told his father and mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnath. The daughters of the Philistines, now therefore get her for me to wife. You hear that? So there's a lot of guys that he 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 said, get her for me to wife. So he wasn't breaking any laws or none of that. All right. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? And Samson said unto his father, Get her for me, for she for she pleases me well. He wanted this woman. She must have been fine <laughs> for him to go through all that trouble to go. Because <laughs> the Israelite women are, 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 are beautiful. Some of the most beautiful women on the earth. But hey, there's a lot of heathen women that are attractive too, though. All right. Um, but nevertheless, um, no, no law was broken. So that clears up that whole thing that you can't be with a heathen. You can have a heathen concubine, man. She's just not to get the rights of a, of a wife. The Israelite woman always comes first. Okay, um, but let's get to this 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 uh, 
As a matter of fact, let me play a clip of this video before we go to the next portion to prove these points. All right. About betrothal. In ancient days, marriages was not an agreement between two individuals, but between two families. Ah. Uh, now it's all about me, modern day, me, me, me. The newly married man usually did not find a new home for himself, but occupied a nook in his father's house. So they extended the, the family home. The family of the Why is that? Because in most cases, they both were young. The male was anywhere from 16 to 18, maybe 20. And the girl was anywhere from, from 12 to 15 years old. And that's a rough guesstimate because, you know, women, whenever they reach the flower of their age, when they start getting that period, it can be anywhere from, from 12 to 14 is when they get it. All right. That's why they were in the nook. And the, as the young man was being built up to, so he could sustain and take care of his family. Groom gained, but the family of the bride lost a valuable member who helped with all the household tasks. Uh, that's a perfect example. Perfect time. And so that dowry was paid because they lost a, 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 a big help. So let's, uh, and people, you know, take that as a demeaning the woman that they're, he's paying for her. But let me go to the definition of uh, a maid and maiden. All right. I'm going to try and read it through the camera, okay, so that you can see. Maid, all right, this is from the Winston Simplified Dictionary Encyclopedic Edition with biblical references, and it says, hold on, let me get, it says, maid, all right, an unmarried woman, a girl, a virgin, a female servant, all right, maiden, an unmarried girl or woman, a virgin. And virgin, remember, virgin has two meanings. Virgin being one has never been, has has never had sex before, been penetrated. All right, and or virgin meaning she she can she still can bear children. All right, because she could have been married and her husband died. Now she's getting married again. All right, so there's two different you know meanings for the word virgin. All right, but it told you a girl, a female state, a girl. All right, so let's go look up the definition of girl. All right. A young girl, a young person, a female child, young unmarried woman. All right. So there's a difference between a child and someone who has reached puberty because both male and female are considered adult by the law of the Hebrews when they reach puberty. They're responsible for themselves, meaning if now they don't have no covering for their sins. All right. So now that we've got that out the way in today's society, if you marry somebody 13 or 14, that will be called statutory rape. That is where the confusion and the rumors and the lies were spread, because we were pointing out the fact that in ancient times, people like I said, even all the way up into the earlier part of the 19th century, people were getting married at 13, 14 years old. All right. I think that even in the color purple, the, the they were met. The girls were like 13, 14 years old as they were going to un into them and giving them, getting them pregnant and marrying them. And and most and most of these men that were doing this in that movie were old enough to be the fathers of these girls. All right. So. Um, let's go. Let's click to another video talking about ancient. Uh, no, nope, this one. Come on, man. Okay. I guess I got to put in the whole name again. Um, so, Slovakia. Oops, nope, not that one. Damn it. I had it all set up, so I don't know what happened. There we go. Ancient, okay. All 
right, now that it made us do all that, but here it is. Let's uh, click on this video. In ancient Egypt, a woman was concerned. Yeah, I think I had it queued up. See, that's how you know I had it there, and all of a sudden it disappeared. But we're going to start at about the. Uh, this is King Tut. Well, uh, became king at 12. He was married and died by the time he was 18. So his wife had to was probably three to four years younger than him. So where your shipping address you gotta suffer this. itself. Where all your tabs go. Okay. It's really been a challenge doing this video. More than any of his reign's accomplishments, had beautiful images of him with his wife and Kashinaman in romantic poses. Another thing that shows you, too, is that they were people of color. They were not so-called white people. And we know that the Israelites uh, came, uh, came up amidst the Egyptians, amidst the, uh, the Mizraim, all right? And all these images of them clearly show that they were people of color, swarthy people, very dark, with woolly hair. Interestingly, every painting of Tutankhamun and Anka Cinnamon depicts their devotion to each other by their proximity, hand gestures, and adorable expressions. Now remember, he was uh, 18 at death. He became king at 12, So, and his bride was much young, well, not much younger than him, but she was a good four or five years younger than him, more than likely, all right? And, and the video is going to, the information is going to uh, confirm that. Such art covers most of the concerned Pharaoh's tomb, who died at the mere young age of 18. Sadly, Anka Cinnamon disappears from historical records shortly after, possibly implying her early demise as well. Well, because normally when an Egyptian king died, they buried his wife with him. So they probably killed her and then buried her, you know, in the tomb with him more than likely. Well... This was a common theme. In now, look at this tomb. I mean, we're kind of covering multiple things here at once. We're talking about marriage and, 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 and rape, but we're also proving beyond a shadow of a doubt, which you will get no argument among the Israelites, that these are the people uh, of, uh, of the Lord. You know, a lot of these are Hebrews on this wall, and, um, and they were mixed in. You know, they came to be among the Egyptians. So you have to ask yourself, you know, where where is uh the birds and the burgess and the you know the Finkelsteins and the the Cohens where where are they you know who who are they because they clearly are not the ancient Israelites but let's go tomb paintings as more art and inscriptions showed husbands and wives eating and dancing and working together where your shipping wow. address in Paris where all your tabs go every. Ancient Egyptian society was based on the idea of the swarthy people, the nuclear family, and they would arrange their gods into such groupings as well. No white people. Once a young man was well into adolescence, it was appropriate for him to seek a partner and begin his own family. You hear that? Well, he well into adolescence. So when is adolescence? At 12, 13. All right. So he would be married. Because well, remember, King Tut was married and died at 18. So he had been married already. Okay? Let's see what they say about the young women who's on the, the image behind them. Females were probably thought to be ready for marriage after their first menses. After their first menses. As soon as they had their, their uh, period, they were prepared uh, for marriage or got married. That was the ancient world. And like I said, all the way up until... The earlier part of the 19th century, in the early 1900s, people were still getting married at 13 and 14 years old on a normal brace, uh, basis. That was normal, e even here in America. All right. So, uh, you know, I hope that clears up some of the misunderstandings, you know, and that th this this was an edifying and, you know, video, and w you know, with, the, with good information. So with that. I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekha Kodash, Wa Abba, Baba, Kwam Yashara, Shalom.